أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أحل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين ولا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين وقال أمير المؤمنين علي ابن أبي طالب عليه السلام وقد أجرت مقاديرك علي يا سيدي فيما يكون مني إلى آخر عمري من سريرتي وعلانيتي وبيدك لا بيد غيرك زيادتي ونقصي ونفعي وضري O oh Allah, O oh my Master, indeed your decrees regarding all my affairs be the apparent or hidden till the end of my life has transpired. And it is only in your hands and in no one else's that lie my progress and detriment, my benefit and loss. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters. I would, first li- I would firstly like to take this opportunity to congratulate all of mankind on the birth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's final light and that final savior of all of mankind, of all of humankind, that individual who has been awaited by all divine religions and all divine religions still await for this individual to come to take us out of this darkness and into light. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our efforts in the night that has just passed or for those who are going into it, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts or accept your efforts insha'Allah and enable us to increase our efforts until we enter into his divine banquet insha'Allah. For as we know now that we have passed the halfway stage of the blessed month of Sha'ban and we are very close to entering into the divine banquet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the questions that may have been asked or may come into a person's mind after reading the previous segment of the dua and this particular segment of the dua where Imam alayhi salam emphasizes very clearly that it is everything that we have and everything that we kind of possess even our deepest, darkest you know, if you like to say secrets, our essential nature, and in this part where the Imam says that Jarrat Maqadiruk, that those particular qadr and decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already transpired. Now, one of the grammatical beauties of this point is when the Imam alayhi salam uses the past perfect particle that is the the Felemazi, it is because it indicates, or one of the indications of this particular particle is that it indicates certainty. Because the Imam sings that I am alive right now, but it has transpired everything. It is that it is a certainty. So one of the possible questions that can come out now is that, okay, if everything is a certainty, what is the purpose of dua? Why do I need to supplicate? If Allah knows everything about me that will occur he knows my current state he knows the changes that will occur and he knows that will happen in the hereafter why supplicate what is the purpose of supplication this is a very detailed discussion and it goes beyond this brief discussion that we are having my dear brothers and sisters the concept of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is something that has plagued and rather tickled the mind of great philosophers and the mystics from the very onset. And yes, inshallah, we pray that we are able to one day hopefully dwell into this deep and detailed topic of the ilm of Allah and the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But for the sake of of us who have not yet reached that highness and have not yet seen or have not have the huzuri and presential knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one thing is to know that yes, dua is very effective. 
But more importantly than that, especially for us, is to know that we are performing something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And this is one of the simple answers that we can give. Is that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself who loves us to supplicate to him. For in the glorious Quran, by means of the imperative form, that is the command form, the fali amr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands his servants and his slaves to call upon him. And that he will then provide an answer. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ghafir, the 60th verse of this beautiful surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Your Lord has said, call me or call upon me and I will hear and answer you. Similarly we see in a hadith, in a tradition from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam that is narrated in Al-Kafi, it is said that the Imam is reported to have said that إِنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارِكَ وَتَعَالَى يَعْلَمُ مَا يُرِيدُ الْعَبْدُ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَلَكِنَّهُ يُحِبُّ أَن تُبَثَّ إِلَيْهِ الْحَوَاعِجِ فَإِذَا دَعَوْتَ فَسَمِّي حَاجَتَكَ That Imam alayhi salam is reported to have said that is Imam Sadiq alayhi salam that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you want and desire when you supplicate to him. That as soon as we raise our hands towards the heavens and our heart transcends towards the divine arsh, Allah already knows what is in our hearts. As we saw in the last segment of the dua, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya'rifu ma fi zamiri. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is in our deepest and absolute essential nature. And then the Imam continues and says, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves it when the requests are expounded towards him. That the person does not just mention that I need, no, he goes into great detail of what he wants. And then the Imam continues and says that when you therefore supplicate towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mention your needs and desires. Speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this itself has great effects both spiritually and physically therefore we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that in this one way of looking at supplication that it is an act that you love ya Allah and by means of this act that you love you become close to us or rather we get proximity towards you especially in this month of Shaban and especially by this supplication of Imam Ali alayhi salam and that therefore when we enter into the divine court, into the divine banquet, we are close to you, Ya Allah. Because we have been doing things that you love. And therefore when we request of you, why is it that you Allah, how is it rather that you Allah can deny the request of one of those who you love, one of those who has gained your proximity? Inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of the true lovers of dua and therefore becoming the true lovers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the true soldiers and servants of the imam of the time imam al sahib al asli wa zaman inshallah until next time my dear brothers and sisters please remember us in your duas especially in this last few nights in this last few opportunities we have in this blessed month of Sha'ban assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم هبني كما على الانقطاع إليك وأنر أبصار قلوبنا بضياء نظرها إليك حتى تخرق أبصار القلوب حجب النور